Okay, so this is kind of the meat of the chapter. This is the most important stuff. Um, so dissociation constants, I would really call this weak acids and bases. All of this stuff is talking about weak acids and bases. We're gonna start with weak acids. We're gonna talk about a couple of things and then I'm gonna do another section on weak bases, which can be slightly different, but pretty much the same exact constant or concept. So dissociation constants, um, so when we're dealing with weak acids, things do not completely dissociate. They, they are not completely ionized. So in general, what we have to recognize is when I have some weak acid, and by the way, I am going to use HA as a reference to a weak acid pretty much exclusively. So whenever you see HA or me mention H, whenever you see a K, we recognize that it's a weak acid, but HA is kind of the generic term for an acid. H is going to fall off and A minus is going to be left behind. So if I have HA, it is in equilibrium with H plus aqueous plus A minus aqueous. So we essentially have it dissociate into H plus and A minus. Remember, this is like, I don't know, 95% of it is this and like 5% of it max is usually like that. So most of it is this is the K value is going to be important here. So if I wrote that out, um, we could, well, before I continue that, the true way it would look is this HA aqueous plus water liquid is in equilibrium with H3O plus aqueous plus A minus aqueous, okay? Um, but we really usually use this one. This is kind of the standard uh, because we usually just ignore the addition of water. We can't with bases and you'll see why. But if you write the Ka for the highlighted reaction, the K equilibrium, again, we call it a Ka. It's the dissociation constant. So it's the dissociation of acid into its parts. So Ka is A for the acid is equal to the concentration of products over reactants. So concentration of H plus times A minus all over the concentration of HA. Products over reactants, products over reactants. So there's my Ka. So we're going to solve these a lot like equilibrium questions because they are, in fact, equilibrium. Okay, so this is an equilibrium problem. We have to recognize that. Come on, there we go. All right, so these equilibrium constants, let's think about what they actually mean. A higher, an increase in Ka equals an increase in concentration H plus equals a decrease in pH or an increase in acidity. Okay, so the higher the Ka value, the more dissociation we're going to have, right? So in fact, if I looked at, if I look at all of these, we have a bunch of values. Which one is the strongest acid? Well, the top here versus the bottom, this has this highest Ka value. We would actually say this is the strongest of this group. Strongest acid, this is the weakest because of the Ka values. By the way, we will introduce this idea, and so I'm going to use it now. pKa is the negative log of the Ka. So if we actually do pKa's of these things, we find out that the first one is 2, the second one is 2.17, uh, 2.17, and so on and so forth. Uh, those values are, again, just to make numbers simpler instead of talking about Ka values in terms of these long things, but we're not going to use pKa as much. I just want you to recognize that this equation here is important. That's the one that we need to be able to convert back and forth between the two. Okay, so it can be discussed the greater the Ka, stronger the acid, and it can also be expressed as pKa. So we're going to do these the exact same way we would do an equilibrium problem. So calculate, so calculate the Ka from the pH. So, and, I, and I'm gonna point this out right now and I'm gonna point it out again and again and again, the pH of a 0.1 molar solution happens to be 2.38. That is the pH. pH is the concentration of H plus at equilibrium. 
That's it. Know that. pH is the concentration of H plus at equilibrium. Okay. pH is equal to concentration of H plus at equilibrium. What are you chewing on? All right. So what, much like when we look through our ice tables and look for values, this is going to be one of them. So we're going to let's set this up. How, how do we normally set up an equilibrium problem? Because that's what it is. We know that this is for, uh, formic acid. It's not one of the strong acids, so I know this is a weak acid. The fact that this is a weak acid means we need to treat this like an equilibrium problem. HA, again, I don't really care what formic acid looks like. Uh, formic acid is simple. Formic acid is just simply HCOOH. But what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, this is my acidic proton, and all of this is going to be considered my A minus. And this right here is going to be considered my H plus. And I'm just simply going to say, all right, my equation is HA aqueous dissociates into H plus aqueous and A minus aqueous. That's it. That's how we do it. And of course, we can take the extra step and write Ka. Ka is equal to H plus A minus all over HA. Okay. Again, we just write out the equilibrium and the equilibrium expression. That's what we start with. And just normally I wouldn't do this, but calculating Ka from the pH. So let's just create an ice table because it should help us recognize what we have. Again, we're in molarity initial change equilibrium. Here we go. Concentration, so what do we have? So the pH of a 0.1 molar formic acid solution, again, we said that this is a weak acid. Um, so we know that the initial concentration of formic acid is 0 0.10 molar. Uh, and we don't see any reference of H plus and A minus beforehand because it should just be water. So we don't really have, we do have some H plus, but nothing to worry about. The pH is equal to 2.38. Um, so what is that the equilibrium value of? I said that's the equilibrium value of H plus. So let's just take that aside quickly. So the concentration of H plus is equal to 10 raised to the negative pH, which is equal to 10. Actually, I don't even really need to convert it. 2.38, 10 raised to the negative 2.38. So what is my concentration of H plus? It is 10 raised to the negative 2.38. Or I could actually just do the math for it and find out that it's actually equal to 0 0.00417. 0 0.00417. So with that said, when this reaction starts, we don't have any product. So we know that it's gonna go in that direction. So we know that we're going to gain product and we are gonna lose reactant. Well, because we have all of this stuff in the center, we have H plus, we know that the concentration is going to start at zero and it ends at 0.417. So that is the co equilibrium concentration of H plus. But now that we have one change, we have all of the changes, 0 0.00417, which is 0 0.00417, and then 0 0.00417. So 0 0.10 minus 0 0.00417 gives me a value of 0 0.096. Let's highlight all of my concentrations. That's equilibrium of A minus. That's the equilibrium of HA. And now I can just plug these values in. So concentration of HA times A minus is, they're the same thing. So I can just square it. HA is 0 0.096. We end up with 1.8 times 10 to the minus four. And that's it. We have done it. That is the concentration of that is the concentration of, or that is the Ka value. That's what we're looking for. Done, we're looking for the Ka. So there's a little trick that I wanna use. Um, let's determine the percent ionization from formic acid. So these are the values that we have. 
okay? Um, and what I'm going to do is I need to know a couple of things. First of all, I need to know concentration of H plus at equilibrium, which is based on the pH. And in this case, it is 0 0.00417. I need to know the concentration of HA initial. In this case, it's 0 0.10 molar. molar. And now let's take a look. So percent ionization. What is the percent ionization of this? Well, again, percent ionization is going to be uh, any percentage is part over the whole. So this one's going to be, and this is always what it is, concentration of H plus at equilibrium divided by concentration HA initial times 100. So percent ionization is going to be 0 0.00417 molar divided by 0 0.10 molar times 100. Percent ionization comes out to be 4.17%. So there's a rule that we're going to use. If the percent ionization is less than or equal to 5%, we can assume that concentration of HA initial is equal to the concentration of HA at equilibrium. So this rule right here is actually going to help us so we can avoid the quadratic equation. Uh, what it's basically saying is, if the percent ionization is tiny, that means that the concentration of the acid is not going to change all that much. And if the concentration of the acid doesn't change all that much, our life becomes just significantly quicker. Okay, so percent ionization, if the percent, we, we do this, we do this, we check this percent ionization after doing the assumption. So you'll see how we kind of do it, but that's the rule, 5% is the rule. So, Niacin, one of the B vitamins, has a molecular structure of this. What is the acid dissociation constant? Again, what I want you to do is I want you to take this whole part here, and we're just simply going to call this thing a minus. This right here is my H plus. So again, when we write out our dissociation constant, HA, H plus aqueous plus A minus aqueous, because if we keep all of these the same, we just basically say A minus is everything other than the proton falling off. Every single calculation we do is going to be the same. So why don't you guys work through this? We're going to work on this one in class. What is the percent ionization for the niacin? And we're going to get through that. Um, good. So calculate P, P, uh, the pH from the Ka. So here we're going to do this calculation, calculate the pH from the Ka. So let's give this, let's give this one a go. Uh, let's see here. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. So let's give this one, let's give this one a try. So this is the other way. Before we were solving for Ka. Now I'm giving you a Ka and I'm asking for you to solve for the, uh, I'm asking you to solve for the pH. Again, what is pH? pH is simply the concentration of H plus at equilibrium. So that's what we're really trying to do. Again, whenever we do one of these, we are going to, and I'm going to take this whole thing. I'm going to call this a minus. I'm going to call this H plus, and that makes this right here a minus, makes this H plus. I can ignore the water and let's do this. So again, if I keep it all the same, the, every single problem looks the same, which is good because it keeps us consistent. So write down our equilibrium. Write down our Ka expression, which is concentration of H plus concentration of A minus 
all over concentration of HA. Good. We're going to set up our ice table. So it's all in molarity, initial change equilibrium. There we go. And what do we actually know? Well, we know that it is a 0 0.30 molar solution. We know that we don't start with any H plus or A minus. Right, so we know that is, this is the solution. We know that the Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. So I can go over here and do this, 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. And I'm looking for those other values. So I'm looking for equilibrium values. So um, we don't really have any information other than that. So what do we do? We don't have any equilibrium values, meaning we have to find them. So let's do it. So we know that we're gonna lose HA and we are going to gain our products. And so we would say that this is 0 0.30 minus X. This is plus X, which is plus X, so X and X. We are going to make an assumption here. I'm gonna say X. I'm going to say that X is very small. This is where we're gonna make that 5% assumption. We're gonna assume X is small. So if X is small, that means it's not going to really affect the 0.3 and we'll just say, all right, well, the concentration at equilibrium is just simply the same thing as the initial concentration. So that is going to be the concentration because X is not gonna take away, it basically it's just gonna dwarf, the 0.3 is gonna dwarf any X value and that's what we've got. And so here are my equilibrium values. Again, we'll check this at the end and see if it's below 5%. If it's below 5%, where our assumption is good. All right, so concentration of H plus, concentration of A minus, all over concentration of HA at, e HA at equilibrium. So 1.8 times 10 to the minus five is equal to X squared all over 0 0.30. Uh, let me cross multiply quickly. So I get 5.4 times 10 to the negative six is equal to X squared. Okay, what can we do from here? We're looking for X. Yeah, that's right. We can take the square root of both sides. Taking the square root of both sides is just simply gonna give me X is equal to 0 0.0023. If X is equal to 0 0.0023, what we know is the concentration of H plus is equal to 0 0.0023 molar, which means that I can solve for the pH. pH is equal to negative log concentration of H plus, which is 0 0.0023, which happens to equal 2.64. So there we go, we've got our pH. Well, let's double check this by doing the, the check assumption. Check the assumption. So concentration of H plus at equilibrium divided by HA initial times 100. So that's the percent ionization. So the percent ionization is equal to 0 0.0023 divided by 0 0.30 times 100. Percent ionization comes out to 0.76%. Assumption is okay, or I should say it's okay to assume. Concentration of HA initial equals equilibrium. Okay, that's it. That's how we check it. Our answer is 2.64 is the pH. Calculate, uh, so for this next one, calculate the pH of 0.1 HF. We're gonna do this one in class, but do this one first and check your assumption because what you should get is your assumption, assumption is not going to be okay. And because your assumption is not going to be okay, we're gonna actually do it a different way and we'll, we'll walk through that in class. Okay, good. So. Those are the polyatomics. Um, 
polyprotic acids, uh, polyprotics, I'm just quickly going to do this and we'll walk through it in class, uh, maybe, but polyprotics have more than one. So if I look at H3PO4, I have um, multiple H3, basically multiple protons that are going to fall off. So in this, if I were to look at like H2CO3, there are two protons, there are two H's that can fall off. If we look at a generic diprotic acid, so H2A, generic acid, we have two equilibriums happening. First of all, we have the, uh, the first one calling, falling off, that's my Ka1, and I have my HA minus becoming H plus and A2 minus. That is my Ka2. So this is dissociation of the first proton. This is dissociation of the second proton. And what we know is if we actually kind of take a look, if we kind of take a look at these things, these are the kind of the Ka's that we see. And what we really want to look at, the trick here is if you look at the comparison of Ka1 versus Ka2, we see that this change right here is what? Seven orders of magnitude. Meaning the Ka2 is not going to matter at all because that's seven orders of magnitude. The second proton is not gonna contribute much acidity at all. But if you look at something like tartaric acid here at the bottom, we say this is only like two orders of magnitude. So there's only a hundred times difference. So that will uh, that will affect the pH. So ultimately, what it comes down to, so pH only depends on Ka one if Ka one is greater than or equal to one thousand times. Ka2. Okay. So basically, if Ka1 is three orders, two, three orders of magnitude different, then we are going to have to do some special calculations. And we can walk through those special calculations in this example here, if you like. So, well, we can take a look at this, but ultimately, uh, it's a pretty simple, it, it, this is a pretty complex problem, but just know what a uh, polyprotic is. Okay. All right, and then the next video is going to be on weak bases, weak base equilibria.